All right, Algebra 1, Lesson 102. This one is on graphing or absolute value inequalities. Absolute value inequalities. All right, we're going to do uh, six different um, examples. The first one says this, graph x is greater than 2. Now, um, I'm going to show you a graph real quick. Let's go on and do that. This will be my one that I use the whole time. Basically, what is the distance? So if I put a negative 2 as an absolute value, um, absolute value always tells me how far is negative 2 from 0. Well, negative 2 is 1, 2 spots. So the answer to, let's just pretend this isn't here for just a second. So um, absolute value of negative 2 is just 2 because it's asking you, when you see this absolute value, they're asking you how far is negative 2 from 0. It's two spots. Well, what about negative 5? How far is negative 5 from 0? It's five spaces from 0. So basically, whatever the negative is, it becomes the positive number of it, if you want to think of it simpler. Okay? But I just wanted to share that with you. Now, we're just going to do some trial and error on these because that's the easiest way to do them. So we're going to pick a number. Let's do negative 30. All right? Negative 3 um, is my x. So if negative 3, is negative 3 greater than 2? Well, negative 3 absolute value means, remember, 3 is greater than 2. So negative 3 works. So I'm going to put a dot that, that we tried that because we tried the negative 3 in our x and it worked because negative 3 really became positive 3 and 3 is greater than 2. All right, let's try negative 2. Is negative 2, which is really 2, greater than 2? Well, 2 cannot be greater than 2. 2 equals 2. So negative 2 does not work. Okay, well, let's keep trying a few more. Uh, let's try negative 5. Negative 5, okay, is really 5. Is 5 greater than 2? Yes, so we know that negative 5 works. Would negative 4 work? Yes, because it would be 4 is greater than 2. So we're finding a trend, even if I did negative 6. As you can see, everything past negative 3 this way is working. Negative 2 in this way wasn't. But let's try a few more. Let's try, um, let's do positive numbers because we are doing negative numbers. Now let's do positive numbers. Let's do 3. Okay, 3, remember absolute value is how far is 3 away from 0. So that just, oops, I didn't mean to put that in the lines. So uh, absolute value 3 is just 3. Is 3 greater than 2? Yes. So my 3 works. Okay? Now I'm not drawing on the line because I want to keep using this. All right, what about 2? Well, absolute value 2 would just be 2, and 2 is not greater than 2 because it's equal. So we don't need to go back this way. What about 4? Absolute value of 4 is 4. Is 4 greater than 2? Yeah. Is 5 greater than 2? Yeah. 6 greater than 2? Yeah. So what you see for us to answer this would be this. That's how you would answer it on this number line. Okay? And we would, this, um, this negative 2, we would fill in openly because it doesn't equal. But everything after these two, since they didn't just tell us to do integers, we're doing all of it, we would also include this because it would be like 2.5. So a negative 2.5 would just be 2.5. Is 2.5 greater than 2? Yes. So we need this right here because that's 2.5. So we leave this open. Same thing with this 2. We leave it open because 2 is not greater than 2. But is 2.5 greater than 2? Yes. So in here is greater than 2. So we leave these open circle because it does not equal that. But everything else it does. All right, that's example one. We'll do a few more, make sure you're getting it, okay? Okay, let's look at the next one. Next one says this. Okay, same thing. We're doing trial and error on this one again, but this one has less than equal to, so that's important. So let's do some negative numbers. Let's try 
by negative 3, which really turns to 3, is 3 less than or equal to 3? Yes. So my number that I used was a negative 3. What about a negative 2? Negative 2 turns to 2. Is 2 less than or equal to 3? Yes. All right. Let's try higher. Let's do a negative 4. Negative 4, which is 4. Is 4 less than or equal to 3? No. So we can't go past this. All right. But well, let's see if we can do any more. Um, let's do let's do negative 1, which is 1. Is 1 less than or equal to 3? Yes. So we know that works. Okay. Let's do some positive numbers. Let's do... Uh, 2 is 2 less than or equal to 3. Oops, I'm sorry. If I was going to do 2, which is 2. 2 is less than 3, yes. So we know that works. All right, let's try 3 here. Absolute value of 3 is 3. Is 3 less than or equal to 3? Yes. What about 4? 4 is, absolute value of 4 is 4. Is 4 less than or equal to 3? No. So we stopped there. Okay? So as you can see from here to here, it's going to be an answer, okay? So that's exactly what you put, just like that. And because we did the equal to parts, we stop there, okay? All right, let's do 102.3, that example. That example says this. Um, X. Now each of these things are going to teach you something different, so make sure you're paying attention. All right, because this is kind of a new problem. Because, again, let's choose um, uh, negative 3. Negative 3, uh, absolute value is 3. Is 3 less than negative 4? Well, this one's a positive number. A positive number cannot be less than negative 4. So we can't graph that. Hmm. Let's try a positive number. 3. 3 becomes 3. Is 3 less than negative 4? So no. So basically what I want you to realize is that whether I put a positive number or a negative number in here, it's going to become a positive number. And a positive number is never less than a negative number. So we actually cannot graph anything, and that's exactly what you would say. Cannot graph anything because positive numbers are always going to be less than negative numbers. So there's 102.3. Let's do 102.4. Uh, All right, here we go. Uh, let's try negative 3, which is really 3. Is that greater than negative 4? 3, positive, is always greater than negative 4. Yes. And I, whoops, I put this in negative 3. All right, let's try negative 4. Negative 4 is 4. Absolute value negative 4 is 4. Is 4 greater than negative 4? Positive numbers are always greater than negative numbers. So. No matter what I choose, it's always going to be better because even if let's choose 6. If I put 6 in here, absolute value of 6 is 6. Is 6 greater than negative 4? Yep. So we basically fill all this in because no matter what, absolute value is always going to change to a positive answer, and a positive answer is always greater than negative 4. All right? Now, this next one we're going to do, I really want you to pay attention because... It could get really confusing, and the next two are like this. So, for example, it's got a negative x like that, greater than or equal to negative 30. Now, there's an easier way to do this, okay? Well, um, we could actually do this, put a number in, figure it out, add the negative, and do it like that, but there's actually an easier way. You can actually do what's the opposite of this, What's the opposite of this? And what's the opposite of this? And change everything around. So this negative's uh, absolute value x would just be absolute value x if we changed it to its opposite. What's the opposite of greater than and um, equal to? It's less than and equal to. Right? And what's the um, opposite of negative 3? A positive 3. So this is a whole lot easier to do than this. So, we worked all these before, so I'm not going to do that again, but I wanted you to see how to do that. Now, the next one is similar, but it has a little bit of twist to it. 
That's the problem. Minus 2 is greater than negative 5. Now, this one looks a little bit more confusing because I have this and then I don't just have an equal or less than or whatever and then a number. I actually have another number in between right here in the middle. And hopefully you remember you want x's on one side and numbers on the other past the equal. And we're pretending this is an equal sign um, for using those rules where you take a minus 2 and bring it across and it becomes a plus 2. You remember those rules? Okay? If you worked with me very long, then you know. So now let me rewrite this. Negative um, absolute value x greater than, and then negative 5 plus 2 becomes a negative 3. Okay? And now it looks like what we were looking at a while ago. But remember, we don't like this negative absolute value. So we're going to change this opposite, this opposite, and this opposite. So negative x, basically what you're doing is multiplying by negative all of this. Okay, so that's kind of why I changed it. But just let you know. Okay, so here we go. Negative x is just going to become x. Greater than is going to become less than. And negative 3 is going to be positive 3. And this becomes your new um, thing that you want to do to try to come up with your answers. And again, I'm not going to figure them out because we worked enough of those. That's lesson 102.